Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. And in this video newsletter, what we're going to be talking about, well, we're going to be answering a question that somebody sent to me about, can operators solve problems? Can they problem solve? Okay, so Tim, you sent me this message a few weeks ago. I apologize for the slightly slow delay. I've been on holiday and I had one or two things to sort out when I got back. But here's the video and you'll see why I'm going to make a video of this rather than just answer your email directly because it's a little bit involved. OK, so can operators problem solve? Um, now, the question partly, partly was about can they identify the problem? at the point of activity. So can operators problem solve? So it was sort of about, can they identify the problem, I suppose, as in can they identify the root cause? Now, the answer to the question, really, Tim, is sometimes they can and sometimes they can't. Okay, now there's a certain amount of problem solving that operators can do. You can work your way to, to operators being better at it. But we've got to talk about the maturity of your process, okay? So I'm going to assume, I, I don't know where your processes are in your company. So I'm just going to assume that the maturity of your processes are sort of at level one. And then we'll take you through the steps and what operators should be doing at each one of those steps. Now, before we do that, I'm just going to identify the idea of process thinking. So you've got a process. Effectively, you're trying to make money. You've got inputs. And of course, you will have outputs. And problem solving, finding the root cause, is always going to be on the input side of this diagram. So you've got inputs, you've got outputs. Okay, now then. So the, so the root cause is going to be over here. The root cause is always over here. The question is, of course, operators are measuring this, aren't they? They're measuring this and they're seeing a problem. And then what you're asking is, can they go over here and diagnose the problem? Okay. So here's what we're going to say. I'm going to say there are three levels of maturity in a process, okay? So the first one, which is the lowest level of maturity, I'm going to say you have no process control. You have no process control. What you're doing is you are sitting on the skill of the people that set and run your machine. Now, what I mean by that is this. You have no rules over here. So if we had basic machine settings, speed, feed, temperature, pressure, angle, we'll say. I'm just making stuff up, okay? So we've got, they're basic machine settings, okay? Now, there are lots of other inputs apart from this, but I'm just making a simple point about the maturity of your process. So, you have no process control. In other words, you have no rules for this. So, you don't say speed. Speed should be at 1,000. Feed should be at 50. Temperature should be at 80. Pressure should be at 3.2 bar an angle should be at 38 degrees. This doesn't exist. There are no rules. Therefore, each time the, the machine is set up, the skill of the person kicks in and they just find a way. They find a way to make the machine work, whatever that is, okay? So, so no process control whatsoever. Okay, now then, in that scenario, what should the operator do? In that scenario, all the operator should do is record the failure exactly as they see it. So in other words, let's say, I don't know, you could have, 
you're measuring dimension A. Dimension A could be a reject. You could be looking at surface finish. Surface finish could be wrong, therefore you've got a reject. And you could have, we'll call it cosmetic damage. And obviously you've got a problem there, you've got some kind of damage, so again you've got a reject. Now obviously you'd have a code for these, so we'll call this code A, code B, code C. When you have no process controls, the only thing the operator should do is to say, I'm seeing a reject for dimensions. I'm seeing a reject for, for surface finish. That is it. Because forget trying to go, I think it was because the feed was wrong. I think it was because the pressure was wrong. These are different every time the machine is set up. Why would the operator know which one's causing the problem? Too complicated, okay? So, and of course, when you get that, what's that gonna allow you to do? Well, it's gonna allow you to do a Pareto, you know, and you go, okay, code B is the biggest problem, then A, then C, and of course, this would be the first problem that you'd wanna tackle, all right? So, that's maturity level one. The operator just states what they can see. They don't try and judge anything or analyze anything or do anything with that. Now that is the task of an engineer to sort that out. So an engineer or a skilled team of people probably involving the operator, involving the technician, what's the first thing you've got to do? You've got to set these rules. Okay. You set the rule. What, what are the rules, by the way? The rules are process controls. Okay, so we set the rules. Now, we'd also set rules for other things. So you would have other issues, like maintenance. So, I don't know, you might do lubrication weekly. I don't know, clean the filters monthly. You would have a spec for the material. You might have a, a rule for, I don't know, training. I'm making stuff up now, okay? This is, this is the job of a skilled person. Obviously, things like maintenance rules, the operator can't um, necessarily, at this point, understand maintenance. Somebody's gotta find out about what maintenance is needed on the machine, okay? Um, or you could be talking about calibration, by the way. Um, let's put that in there. Calibration, thermocouples, six monthly. These are all inputs and that's a control plan. A control plan is on the input side of the process. If you're here and you think this is your control plan, now that's an inspection plan, okay? Because what you're doing is you don't know what you're doing. You have to grade what's coming out of the machine. You have to go pass and fail and just, and just grade it out. That's an inspection plan. This is a control plan. Okay, so that brings us then, of course, to maturity level number two. Now, maturity level number two is you have rules. You have a control plan. Okay. Now, can the operator problem solve? Yes, potentially the operator can problem solve. But only up to a point at level two. And this is what they would do. Okay, they're measuring stuff. Let's say dimension A. Previously, we've eliminated, I'll take surface finish, sorry, because that was number one. So previously, we've eliminated defects for surface finish. Because what we've done, we've set the rules, we've set the controls here. Okay, so um, because we've set the controls, if we dial in those five controls, we'll always get the right surface finish. Okay, the operator starts to see a surface finish defect. I'm seeing one of those for two months. What is it they do next? Well, what they do next is they audit the controls that they are responsible for. So probably those five uh, controls right there. So they check the speed, they check the feed, they find the temperature is wrong, they check the pressure, they check the angle. What do they do? 
they put the temperature back on the rule. 80 is what they do. Then they can record what was the root cause. Temperature was out of control. Okay, so there you go. That's, that's how the operator gets to be in the, the problem solver, if you like. Are, they can only be problem solvers when the process is explicitly defined. Now then, I'm only asking them to check those five because those are not in their gift. They can't see the lubrication records, the, the filter changing monthly. They don't know what the incoming material was. They don't know if people have been trained through the factory and previous processes and things like that. They don't see the, the calibration records. Okay, so here, what are they doing? The operator, when there's a problem, they conduct an audit. That's all that was. It's an audit. I'm in charge of five things. Are they correct? And by the way, if they are correct and the machine still keeps spitting out surface defects, surface finish defects, what should the operator do? They should have permission to switch the machine off, step away from the machine and ask for help. It's not their problem. It's not their problem. They don't go fiddling with this when these are correct. They don't problem solve when the problem is not in their area of responsibility. Okay, so that's, that's level two. Now, level two is very easy to get to, potentially. So, level two is where I want you to get to, really. But then, of course, you get to level three. Now, level three, I'm going to call it Continuous improvement. Continuous improvement. Now what continuous improvement is about, what's the operator doing? The operator is taking on more responsibilities, more responsibilities for the audit. In other words, instead of just auditing these five, they begin to audit these. Why has it got to be continuous improvement? Well, what you've got to start to do now, and this is the power of 5S, by the way. 5S is not about cleaning up. Christ's sake, people who use 5S for cleaning up drives me nuts. So what we're going to do, we're going to do some 5S, workplace organization. That's what 5S is. What we're going to do is we are going to move the maintenance records onto each machine. So instead of the maintenance records being centrally held, they're at the point of activity. Okay, so, so these maintenance records are at the point of activity. Now the operator can audit these five, plus this one and this one. I'm going to move the calibration records to the point of activity. So they can audit this one as well. Now when they get problems over here, they can go and do a bigger audit. They're responsible for more of the process. Can they get to the point where they audit everything? I would say probably not, okay? Because, I don't know, training, their personnel, their HR records, the idea that somebody can go and access somebody else's uh, human resources records, probably not going to happen. That's probably got to be an audit that team leaders do, section managers do, senior managers do. Okay, so can operators problem solve? They, they can only problem solve if the process is explicit. And the process is explicit when you set rules and then all you do is audit the rule. And by the way, this is all the great companies, this is all they do. They set rules that work, that make their defect rates go to the lowest level, and then they make sure that they follow those rules. They are ruthless in doing that. I worked for Sony, and there were days when Sony was a really oppressive 
oh, frustrating place to work because the minute I stepped away from a rule, the minute I violated some rule, I, I, that would be picked up because we visualized everything. I couldn't get away with, with violating any rules. One of the things that I used to violate quite a lot, I used to put untrained people on my line. I needed 67 people to make a production line work. And unless I'd got 67 arms and legs, I couldn't switch the line on. I literally used to get people in the morning, I'd have three or four spots empty. I'd get people from wherever I could and we'd put them on the line and get the line running. But they were untrained. Within 10 minutes, I was pulled up for that. Somebody would audit my line and say, Paul, you have three people who are untrained. If you don't move them, we'll stop the line. It was that ruthless. And the only person that would be blamed, by the way, is me. Nobody would blame the quality department. So the best companies in the world, they have a control plan. They have rules and they stick to them. When you have specific rules, the operator can do the audit if you want. It's easy to do. But without rules, when you're in this level of maturity, the only thing they should do is record the defect is record the defect. And by the way, the other thing about recording the defect, I would go 10 codes only. Don't go any more than that. And also keep the code simple. So don't try and say with cosmetic defects, it's a dent, it's a mark, it's a paint problem. It's a, if you try and break it down, people will misallocate those faults. So just say, it's a cosmetic defect, just say that. And then when you get loads of cosmetic defects, you go, hang on a minute, we need to sort this out and you'll do some work. And that work's got to be define, measure, analyze, improve and control. When you've got big defect rates like that, the operator's not gonna fix it. The operator can only fix a process that's in control. And a process that's in control has rules and then you can audit them. So Tim, it's been a long time answering your question. There's the answer that I wanted to put on the board for you. Um, hope you find that useful. And by the way, anybody else, if you have any questions, please send me a comment below. Please subscribe. Please take a look at my Demake download as well. Uh, but any questions, drop me a line. I'm more than happy to help anyone who's got a question about process control, quality, etc. I hope to hear from you all soon. Thank <laughs> you.